Good evening to all of you. Now we are going to have a briefing session for the PT, which is Pearson Test of English. I'm going to share my screen with you and share a few slides with the PPT. And I'll be explaining the four components of uh, PT, which is the English test, that is listening, writing, reading, and speaking. The order in the PT exam goes like this. It is speaking first and writing, followed by reading and listening. There is no break in the PT exam as of now. The total exam time is for two hours. Now I'll be sharing my screen and explaining these four modules to you with the PT. Thank you. I hope you can see this slide on the screen which I'm sharing. As you can see, PT stands for Pearson Test of English. This is a briefing session which will cover the overview of the four modules. The three parts in PT are called part one, two, and three. Part one or part A consists of speaking and writing. Part two or B is reading, and part C or three is listening. Speaking and writing is combined into one part, and the total duration of the exam is 54 to 67 minutes. That's just for the speaking and writing part. Speaking and writing put together, duration time is 54 to 67 minutes. Let's look at the points below. As I said, the total time of the test is two hours and there's no break. In the beginning of the test, there will be an introduction session, which is of 30 seconds to one minute length. This is a personal introduction session where you will not be scored on this. It's just like a warm up session or a nice breaking session for you to get familiar as to how to use the mic and the headphones, etc. For those who are going to study abroad, this recording of the one minute personal introduction will be sent to your universities or colleges. But for those who are going for PR for work purpose, this is just going to remain with the Pearson and it is not going to be shared anywhere with anyone. It's just a matter of formality. In speaking, there are five kinds of questions. One is read aloud, two is repeat sentence, three describe image, or read the lecture, and five is answer short question. We look at all of these in detail in the coming slides. For writing, there are two tasks. One is called summarize written text, which is a 10-minute task, and essay writing is a 20-minute task. Speaking and writing put together is part one, and the duration for this is 54 to 67 minutes. In the personal introduction session, You'll have to just share your name, your profession, or if you're a student, you can say you're a student. You can share your interests, your plans for future study, or your reasons for studying abroad or working abroad, why you chose to do this PT test, and what is your purpose of this is to get accustomed to speaking on the, with the mic. And as I said, this section is not going to be scored. Let's look at the types of questions. In speaking. The first question type is read aloud and this read aloud test assesses your fluency in reading, your intonation when speaking, your voice modulation and your clarity of speech. Let's look at some tips as to how you can do this better. You can look and observe and identify where the commas are placed, semicolons and full stops. 
it's good to pause for about half a second after a comma and give a rising tone. And you pause for one second after a full stop. So after a full stop, it's a little longer pause. And after a comma, it's a shorter pause. After a comma, you continue with the rising tone. And only when you come to the full stop, you end with the falling tone. You can practice reading with read, by reading newspapers and also keep an audio record or record your voice to see how you speak, what's your rate of speech, what's your, how's your voice modulation, check your intonation and things like that. You will have 40 seconds to prepare before the audio recording begins. So you have 40 seconds to rehearse. And after that, there will be a beep sound and the progression bar will start moving and you will uh, start speaking into the mic and you read the small paragraph within 40 seconds. So you have 30 sec 40 seconds to prepare and 40 seconds to speak. If you're quiet for more than three seconds, the recording gets shut off automatically. So you should make sure you don't keep quiet for more than three seconds throughout the entire speaking uh, test for ET. Let's look at some more details here. You'll have six to seven items. That means you'll have six to seven short paragraphs where you are going to be reading aloud, but all the paragraphs are not going to come all together on one screen. You will get one paragraph at a time. So when you get affirmative sentences with full stops, you have to give a falling tone at the end of a sentence. And when you get interrogative sentences like a question, then you have to end with a rising tone and pause for about one second after that. An exclamatory sentence is a sentence where you speak with a lot of feeling, with deep feeling. And here you have to also say it with more expression, with deeper feeling. And in case you make any mistakes while you're doing the read, read aloud question type, you don't go back and correct yourself. For example, if you uh, utter the word tables instead of table, don't go back and correct it and say table. Reason for this is because additions are counted as errors, omissions are also errors, and replacements are errors. So if you go back and repeat a word, it goes like an addition of another word which is not there in the program. So it comes as a double error. And the entire Pearson test is all scored, marked, assessed, and evaluated by the computer itself using artificial intelligence, various algorithms and programs. So there's no human intervention at all in the Pearson test. Maintain a natural pace while you're speaking. Neither go too fast, nor go too slow. Just maintain a regular pace because in all the question types, you have to maintain the same pace. You can't be too fast in one of the questions, neither can you be too slow in some of the questions because that again is going to alter your rate of speech and the algorithms, the, the computer, which is going to assess your speaking will find some uh, differences and that may affect your score. Enable your enunciation for the examiner. So when you speak at a normal, regular pace, natural pace, it enables, the, it enables clear enunciation and pronunciation for the examiner to evaluate you. The microphone will close after three seconds if you're not gonna be speaking anything. So make sure at no point during the speaking test that you're gonna be quiet for three seconds or more than that. So within two seconds, you have to continue speaking. Even if you give a pause, make sure you finish the pause within two seconds and you continue with your speech. These are the criteria for read aloud question type. Enabling skills are oral fluency, pronunciation and content. There are two skills which I evaluated, reading and speaking. So you have partial credits. That means you have integration of scores. You have um, reading evaluated as well as speaking. So when you're speaking, you're reading the text. So reading is also being evaluated. So you get a score also for reading as well as speaking because your intonation, voice modulation, and um, pronunciation, all those are part of your speaking skills. The marks allotted are five marks for content, five for pronunciation, and five for oral fluency. Now let's look at the second question type in speaking, that is repeat sentence. You will have 10 to 12 items. That means you will hear a sentence being dictated and your task is to repeat the sentence in the same word order. The prompt time of the sentence will be three to nine seconds. And the word length is uh, usually about uh, eight to 15 words. 
Once the audio finishes, the recording will stop. There is no beep sound at the end of the sentence. So you have to just continue speaking. You can, you can imitate the voice modulation and the pronunciation, but not the accent. Listen sometimes with closed eyes and memorize the sentence, and then you can reproduce it if you want to remember in a visual way. And the blue recording bar appears in the recording status box. Speak into the microphone. The microphone will close after three seconds if you're not going to be speaking anything. If you can't manage to remember the whole sentence, at least focus on the keywords and repeat the keywords. You will get marks for those at least. Criteria for this question type is repeat sentence, is oral fluency, pronunciation and content. The two skills are speaking and listening because you're listening to the sentence and then you're going to speak and reproduce the sentence as they say it in the word, same word order. Three marks are allotted for content. That is, if you reproduce the entire sentence exactly how they say it, you'll get three marks. If you say at least 50% correct, and then you get two marks. And if you say about 25% of the sentence correct, and uh, the rest of the words are not correct, then you get one mark out of three. But if you don't say anything at all, it would be zero for content. Pronunciation and oral fluency carries five marks each. To describe image, you will hear, you will look at a, an image or a graph or a chart or table, and you have to study that graph and you have to describe what you see in the graph. You have preparation time of 25 seconds and speaking time of 40 seconds. You will have three or four items like this where you'll have to see a picture at a time and then speak. And once you finish that, you've got to click on the next button and move on to the next question. Throughout the PT test, you can only move forward. You cannot go back. You cannot rewind anything. You cannot revisit a page. Once you click on the next button, you can only move forward. You're neither allowed to pause anywhere. The entire test will just play continuously. So you cannot pause or repeat any of the content that you hear. Try finishing this describe image within 38 seconds because an abrupt ending would bring down your score. So if you're given 40 seconds to speak, you make sure you finish at least three to four seconds prior to that time. And then you can wait to go to the next question because as you're speaking, if your voice is cut off and that's called abrupt ending, then the answer will go as an incomplete answer and your score would be very low. Begin by using words like illustrate. The table illustrates, the, uh, the graph elucidates, the, the pie chart depicts or the picture shows, and you'll have bar graphs, line charts, pie charts, or you could have uh, flow charts, life cycles, etc. You need to use a lot of graphical jargon. Jargon means terminology, and terminology pertaining to graphs called graphical jargon. Uh, use words like timeline. For pie chart, you use the word like slices, or bar graphs, you compare and contrast for bar graphs. You can say there is a rising trend or a falling trend. Use those kind of terminology that abruptly uh, declines, or there's a dramatic rise and things like that. So you can also use directional terms like to the north of southeast, west, on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, next to, below, above. Uh, you use prepositions and prepositional phrases, prepositions of um, direction like foreground, background, etc. You describe the highest and the lowest scores in the beginning. First, you can say what type of graph it is, then describe the highest and lowest scores. Then you compare and contrast the in-between values. At the end, you can give an overview by saying the word overall, and you can conclude your, dis uh, your description. You begin reading as soon as you hear the beep. Uh, bar appears. That's when your recording starts, and your microphone will stop and get turned off if you are so quiet for more than three seconds. This is the same with all the question types in speaking. And let's look at the next slide. The criteria for describe image are, you have three enabling skills, oral fluency, pronunciation, and content. The skill here required is only speaking. You're not doing anything else. You're just looking at the graph and understanding, studying it and speaking. So there's no integration of skills here. It's non-integrated. This question is non-integrated. The scoring is five marks for content, five for pronunciation, and five for oral fluency. 
Now let's look at the next question type, that is number four in speaking, which is recall lecture. You will have one or two items like this. You will hear a lecture of up to 90 seconds length, and then you note while you're listening to this lecture and understand the context of the topic. If there's any name you hear, for example, if you hear Dr. James Alexander says, you can use the expression like Dr. Says. If you don't remember the name, that's fine. But you remember the key points. And at the end of the lecture, you spend about three to five seconds recalling all that you have heard. And then you retell in your own words while you're speaking and you're retelling the lecture. You can refer to your notes and you can uh, also you will get a picture on the screen about what they're talking that gives you an idea of what the context is. From that, you will also get a, a vague idea. Plus, you'll be using your notes and you can frame the sentences and speak. While you're taking a note, you can use shortcuts, short forms, like you can omit the vowels when you're taking a notes. For example, if you're writing table, you just put TBL. You don't have to write A and E, omit the vowels. But you, when you see the letters TBL, you will remember that that stands for table. So this helps you to save time when taking notes because you have to listen and you're listening only once, you will not hear the lecture a second time. You have to be very fast while you're listening, taking notes, and then speaking and retelling the lecture in your own words. You can use phrases like the lecture provides brief information about, and you give a point about what is the topic. Or you can say, according to the speaker, he said, and he said something. And you elaborate what the lecture is talking about. You have to be fluent. Fluency is very important here, and so is the content. So whatever ideas you have gathered, it's important to say that with confidence and with fluency, without stumbling or mumbling, or uh, don't hesitate. Uh, just be confident and speak with fluency. And please remember not to keep silent for more than three seconds. Keep saying something related to the lecture and let the flow go on. The lecture will have to finish in 40 seconds. So probably you could say four to five sentences within this time. So you begin reading. As soon as you hear the beat, you, you begin speaking and the progression bar will keep moving. And when the progression bar is about to finish, you'll know your time is going to be over. Apart from the progression bar, you'll also have a timer on your screen where it will show how many seconds you have remaining for your, for your repeating or retelling the lecture. Here's the criteria for retelling lecture. Oral fluency, pronunciation and content. Here you're listening to a lecture and you're going to say it in your own words. You're retelling this lecture. So you're listening and speaking. This is integration of scores here. It's integrated scoring. Five marks for content, five marks for pronunciation and five marks for oral fluency. Let's look at answer short question. This is the last question type in speaking. So you will have five to six items which will be given. You will hear the question only once and you have to Think of the answer and within three to nine seconds, you have to record your answer. Here there are lots of no beeps on, you just have to give your answer after you're listening to the question. And general questions in English will be asked. The answer should be in one word or a short phrase. The question can be based on any topic. It's just general questions that you will get. You provide the best possible answer that you can give. If you give two answers, only the first one will be considered. The criteria for answer short questions are three skills for enabling skills. Those are oral fluency, pronunciation and content. Speaking and listening are the integration of skills. There are two skills integrated here. The scoring is scored and unscored. That means you get one mark for every correct answer and zero for every wrong answer. Each correct answer carries one mark plus one. With this, we come to the end of the speaking module. Now we come to the writing. In writing, as we saw earlier, there are two tasks. One is summarized written text and one is essay writing. The total duration for the writing alone is 50 to 60 minutes. The combination goes like this. One summarized written text, text task takes 10 minutes and one essay writing task takes 20 minutes. So if you get one SWT, which is summarized written text, if there is one, this will be 10 minutes and two essays would be 20 and 20, 40 minutes. So 40 plus 10 is 50 minutes. 
And if you get two SWTs, that is 10 and 10, 20 minutes, then you will get one essay, which is 20. So 20 plus 20 would be 60 minutes. So it could be either 20 plus 20, 10 and 10, 20, and one 20 years. 20 plus 20, 40. So it could be either 40 minutes or 15 minutes for your entire writing text. Let's look at the details for writing. Let's see how to do the summarized written text. Summarized written text is for 10 minutes each. That is each task is for 10 minutes. The word limit for summarized written text is five to 75 words. You will get a passage on your screen, which is about 300 words in length. You have to read the passage, take down the key points in your notebook, erasable booklet and pen, which will be provided to you. And then once you jot down the key points, you have to write a summary of the entire passage using one long complex sentence. So you summarize the whole text into one long complex sentence by understanding the main topic and the key ideas of the passage. You begin the sentence with a capital letter and end with a full stop. In between, you'll only need capital letters if there are any proper nouns or any other capital letter rules apply. Otherwise, you'll only have a capital letter then beginning and end with a full stop. It's better not to give examples here because that will take up too much of uh, time and words. So you just have to write five to 75 words. Ideal length would be 40 to 50 words so that you don't make too many grammatical errors. Your scoring would be on the content, form, grammar, and vocabulary. Here are some tips as to how to write the summarized written text. You have to briefly summarize each paragraph. So if the text has two or three paragraphs, you summarize each paragraph and then you consolidate them into one long sentence. Gather the key points, extract the key points from every paragraph and then put them together and join all the elements and frame one long sentence. The first paragraph will usually be an introduction. So you can take the introduction from the first paragraph. Most academic writing has a logical structure. So what you have to do is you pay attention to the introduction and the conclusion. In between, you can give the main points of what the article is about. The article A and, uh, and prepositions are generally not counted. You have to use punctuation in between the sentence like uh, commas to separate your ideas or to give a list of words. And you also will be using conjunctions to join the different elements. You'll also use something called relative pronouns, which will help you to join the elements and the different structures in the sentence so that your sentence is long and you're connected with the proper words. The cohesive devices would all be in sync when you want to uh, communicate your idea clearly. The ideal range, as I said, is 40 to 50 words for summarized written text. Let's look at, here is the essay writing, the structure and the description of essay writing. As we saw, you may get one or two essays. If you have one summarized written text, you'll have two essays. And if you have two summarized written text, you'll have one essay. The essay word limit is 200 to 300 words, and the time limit is 20 minutes. The total, total word count will be indicated on the top of your screen, as well as the time taken will also be reflected. Your number of words will show, and uh, you will, can use your notebook erasable booklet to jot down points to make a rough draft, to, uh, to do some brainstorming or mind mapping. You can use your rough notebook erasable booklet for your planning work. The idea is to um, see how you can express your ideas and share your opinions on the topics of the essay. You identify what type of essay it is and plan first. And then you see in about 20 minutes time for essay writing, you spend about three minutes time planning, thinking of what example you're going to give and uh, what are the key points that you should include, etc. So plan for three minutes, then write or type for 14 minutes, and that will be 14 plus 3, 17 minutes. You have three minutes remaining. You will spend this time for editing and reviewing your work and check for all kinds of mistakes like spelling errors, grammatical errors, punctuation, 
capitalization, vocabulary, content. You need to keep time to edit your work and proofread. You should never give your draft copy as it is for evaluation because that may have some errors which you can yourself correct and submit it in a way that is as good as you can. Now, there are two types of essays generally. One is called opinionated. The other one is called discursive. Under opinionated, you have agree or disagree. They give you a situation and ask you whether you agree or disagree. And sometimes they'll give you a situation and ask you to what extent do you agree? And, and there's another type of opinionated essay where they'll give you a topic, a scenario, and tell you to discuss both views and give your own opinion. All these come under opinionated because you are sharing your opinion in these three types of essays. And there's yet another type of essay, which is called discursive essay. A discursive essay is where you're going to be discussing. You will have advantages and disadvantages of a situation, the causes and effects of a scenario, and there can be problems and solutions being discussed for a certain issue or problem. There's also another type of essay, which is called two-part essay, where they give you a topic and ask you two questions based on that topic. That's called a two-part essay. Let's look at the structure of your essay writing. How do we write an essay? You got to uh, organize your essay into paragraphs. In the first paragraph, which is called the introduction, you can paraphrase or give a background statement about the topic in a very general way. Then you can give a thesis statement, which is your opinion. And the third or fourth sentence in your introduction paragraph could be something called transitional statement. So you need to say in the following paragraphs, I will substantiate my viewpoint so that you're showing the connection, the cohesion between your paragraphs. After the first paragraph, please leave a line space. Come to the supporting paragraph number one. This, you know, in this paragraph, you can explain your opinion or your arguments by quoting an example from your own experience or your knowledge, and then leave a line space. And then you come to the second supporting paragraph. Here you can explain the contrary opinion. The contrary opinion is, suppose you agree, you can say, on the other hand, or on the contrary, some people disagree because, and you give a reason why some people would disagree. And then you come back to your view and say, however, I agree because of some reason. And you give another example to quote why you agree by giving your um, strong points or your arguments as to why you think that what you think is the best or why you believe what you believe in. You can give another example here to justify your opinion. And you can also have a third body paragraph, a supporting paragraph, which is optional. That is depending on the type of essay. So suppose the type of essay is uh, discuss both views and give your opinion. So here what you do is you discuss in the first body paragraph, you discuss one opinion. In the second body paragraph, you discuss the second opinion. And in the third body paragraph, you can discuss your opinion with an example. I hope it is clear for all of you so far. I hope there's uh, no any questions. If you have any questions, you can always discuss that. In a while, now we'll come to the conclusion part. After the two body paragraphs, introduction, two body paragraphs, now we come to the conclusion. You can start off by writing to conclude or in conclusion or to recapitulate or uh, to summarize, to sum up. There are various ways of how you can use transitional phrases to conclude. So you, you have to reiterate your opinion in different vocabulary. And do not give any new ideas or examples here. You just have to say what you've already said. You're reiterating your view and your opinion uh, in different words. Don't bring up any examples here. Don't bring new arguments, new thoughts. What you've already said, you're just stating it again to kind of sum up and put everything in a gist and you're wrapping up your essay. Right? This is the structure of your essay. Now we come to the third module, which is reading. In the reading test, this is called, called part B or part two. The total reading test will have 13 to 18 items. Here, your reading skills will be assessed. The total time for this reading test is anywhere between 29 and 30 minutes. 
in reading the task is not timed individually that means each question type doesn't have a separate time frame the entire reading test is timed of 29 minutes or 30 minutes depending on the number of question items the time will be displayed on the screen you can make additions and corrections on each of the screen or each of the pages and then click on the next button you cannot move forward neither can you revisit your page you cannot go back either neither can you pause on any page the question types are multiple choice choose single answer multiple multiple choice choose multiple answers reorder paragraphs reading fill in the blanks reading and writing fill in the blanks these are the five question types let's look at these question types now multiple choice choose multiple items you could have one to two items like this in this question type and here what you're supposed to do is you will read a passage and you'll have options given. You have to select any one. You'll be presented with the passage. You need to go through the text carefully. On the right-hand side of the screen would be the question with multiple options. You need to select any one which you think is the right answer. Your prompt length would be up to about 110 words. The skills assessed are only, only reading. It's only reading, no other integration of skills. You have to choose one suitable answer. The scoring is one mark, one for every correct response, zero for every incorrect response. The multiple choice questions are tricky and challenging. You read every question, um, you read, uh, you read uh, every given piece of information carefully, read the question and the options before reading the text. It's always better, this is a good strategy to read the question and then read the options. Then focus on the adjectives, on the adjectives, the nouns, and the repeated words for clues. You can eliminate the possibly wrong answer or the obviously wrong answer to zero in the right one. Keep track of your time throughout your test because every question type does not give individual time on. Here are some strategies for multiple choice to single answer. First, read the question and the options. Secondly, you go to the passage. Skim the passage for general context. Scan for the answer choices to understand what information you need to search for. Decipher the main idea of the passage. So understand and uh, identify the main idea. If you're able to find the answer, select it. You eliminate the incorrect options. This will narrow your search process. 60% of the answers can be found in the first or last two lines of the passage. Remember the information is in the passage. You remember the information there and you select the answer. Questions are not in chronological order. The answer could be anywhere in the passage. So the options may be jumbled up. You have to see which one correct option applies to the question or is appropriate to the question and you just have to click on that answer. Once you click on it, it gets highlighted and then you move to the next page where you'll get the next question. The second question type is multiple choice, choose multiple answers. You will again get one or two items here. You'll be presented with a passage, same like single answer. You read the instructions carefully. On the right hand side of the screen is the question with multiple options. You will need to select by clicking the correct ones, which you think is the right answer. Now here the difference is that you you will need to select more than one option. And this particular question type has up to 150 words of length. You may have four to five paragraphs for this question. And um, you will have to choose more than one option because it is the question says choose multiple answers. So more than one answer would be correct. But the only thing is that you do not know, you will not know how many answers should be selected. And every correct response carries one mark. Every incorrect response is minus one. That is negative marking for this question. You need to go through question text carefully and remember that more than one option would be correct, but you will not know how many answers should be correct. So that is the hitch here. You have to just see what are the answers applicable to the question, but only if you're absolutely so sure you mark it, otherwise you leave it because you have negative marking for the wrong answers. You will score marks for correct answers for the correct option, you, can, you get one mark. The options that you've clicked on as correct 
would get one mark, but which are wrong will get zero. And um, if you click on all the options, they, you will not get any marks. You will get zero if you just click on all the options. The next question is your order paragraphs. Ask here is you'll have several text boxes, you'll have several uh, paragraphs all put in random order, they're jumbled up. And you have to put these boxes, the text in order by using a logical sequence. The skill used here is only reading and you'll have two to three tasks given for this particular kind of question, which is reorder paragraphs. You may have four paragraphs or five paragraphs and the scoring is one mark for every correct pair. That is, if two answers are adjacent to each other, you get one mark, even if it's in a wrong position, but there are two answers coming in sequence and they're correct, that carries one mark. So every pair carries one mark. The length, the length of the text could be 150 words maximum. The you have to focus on the topic sentence here or the standalone statement first. See what is the topic about? What is the introduction of the statement using um, uh, your ideas as to where they're bringing up a topic for the first time? Where are they introducing a person or a subject or a place or a situation or a time sequence, an era, anything? When they are introducing for the first time, you will see that that paragraph is called the standalone paragraph because it does not require any other paragraph to come before that. After you're finding the standalone paragraph, you then look for the clues for the other paragraphs to connect with it. So here you can use clues like time clues, word clues, idea clues. Word clues are pronouns, for example, if you're introducing a place and then in another paragraph it says it, then that it would refer to the place's name. So it is a pronoun of if they're talking about a person's name, if there is a he or she in another paragraph, then that pronoun refers to that particular noun. So you can use pronoun clues, which are word clues. You can use time sequence of something happening in an order, in series, according to years or centuries. That could be used as clues. Or sometimes they would write uh, two, um, it could be written like uh, 500 years ago. And another paragraph, it says since then. So when you ask since then, you ask yourself since when, and then you connect it to that 500 years ago. So that way you can also connect time clues. Idea clues is where they're talking about the same idea using different words. So you get idea clues, but they're referring to some idea or, or a situation or a topic or a subject they're talking about that idea in different ways. Those are idea clues. You should also check for continuation in objects and subjects. Now, when we say objects and subjects, objects and subjects means, um, objects and subjects are, when you have the ending of a paragraph, that would be the beginning of another paragraph. That would be object and subject. So the ending of one paragraph would be the beginning of another paragraph. And you also find uh, words like conjunctions where you can join words or connectors, see how the words are connected. Suppose you get a word like furthermore, there's a continuation of what is happening. And then they say furthermore, or they say moreover, or nevertheless. So depending on the usage of words, you can also understand how the ideas are put together. Remember that sentences which are used as pronouns or conjunctions cannot be the beginning of a paragraph. So you cannot have a new topic. You cannot have the beginning of a, a series of sentences. The first paragraph cannot begin with he or she or it because those should refer to someone or something. And you cannot have the beginning of a paragraph also starting with um, a conjunction. You can't start a story by saying, however, or you can't start a story by saying, therefore, or as a result of, those will come later after some paragraphs already have been introduced, then you come and use the, uh, you use these uh, conjunctions to join your ideas and sentences together. At the end of your selecting a paragraph, reread it again and check if all the paragraphs have meaning, if there's coherence and if there is continuity. Now let's look at the second, the next question type in reading, that is fill in the blanks. In fill in the blanks, you would have four to five question items. And in each question, there will be a paragraph with three to five blanks in them. 
and you have to read the quest the words below the paragraph you will have more number of words and choices than the number of blanks so if you have five blanks you could have seven or eight words options given below and you choose from that so obviously you'll have some words left out at the end you will not be using all the words for your blanks but it's better always to read the whole paragraph first and then you choose the words which would be appropriately making sense in the in that sentence here the skill assist is only reading there's no integration of skills and uh, you have to fill in the blanks with appropriate choices every correct answer carries one mark and zero marks for wrong answers there's no negative marking for this the length of the paragraph would be about 300 words skim the passage quickly for the general meaning for the context and then you choose the words from the options in reading fill in the blanks about 30% or 20% uh, goes for grammar topics 10% is on vocabulary and 70% is on collocations and phrasal verbs uh, a lot of collocations and phrasal verbs are provided to you in the dropbox please go through them in your dropbox you also have two grammar books called re intermediate and re advanced grammar books please run through them apart from these you also have books for essay writing with sample answers about 70 essays covering various topics on different contexts subjects and fields it gives you good grammatical structures using rich vocabulary uh, there's just model answers which you can go through so all these help you in terms of vocabulary grammar phrasal verb, verbs and collocations you'll also have to pay attention to the pronouns prepositions articles tenses under the grammar questions you could have also questions based on active and passive voice and subject verb argument let's look at the last question type here for reading that is reading and writing fill in the blanks you have five to six questions here and each question that is each paragraph has three to five blanks and like this you will have five to six paragraphs the skills assessed here are two skills reading and listening so there's integration of marks 50% of marks go for reading and 50% goes for writing because you get a lot of questions on grammar as you can see on the right side here 70% of your questions are based on grammar and grammar comes under writing skills so writing is also one of the skills which will be assessed here so you have to have good knowledge of grammar to be able to get the full score for this question time you have to choose the appropriate answers from the drop down list here there are not not jumbled up words you will have blanks three to five blanks so if you click on the one first question blank you will get a drop down list of four options you have to choose from any of these four options again when you go to the second blank you click on that you get another different four words which would fit fit for that particular sentence and you have to choose from those four words so for each question you have four different choices to choose from if you want to change any of your answers click on it again and change whatever you want to change change to the other answer your every correct answer carries one mark and every wrong answer carries zero marks the word text length would be about 80 80 words skim the passage for the entire content here again if you look at the entire paragraph it will help you to get the continuity so in terms of grammar questions like tenses you will know what is the tense used and you can choose the correct answer especially when it comes to continuous tense or perfect tenses if you know the sequence of the whole paragraph it will be easier to relate to the ideas and choose the correct and appropriate tense so as we see of 70% for grammar 70% of questions 20% based on vocabulary and 10% of your questions would be on collocations and phrasal verbs you again have to be thorough with your pronoun usages prepositions articles tenses active voice and passive voice now we come to the third section of part c that is listening and is the last module of your pt exam by time total time for listening is 30 to 43 minutes depending on the number of questions and you will have eight question types uh, totally there are 12 to 20 tasks in this question uh, all to put together so summarize spoken text is the one question where you have 10 minutes for each question after which you don't have 
a particular time frame for each of the questions. It's a total time frame given for all the seven questions put together. The question types are one, summarize spoken text, multiple choice, multiple answers, fill in the blanks, highlight correct summary, multiple choice, choose multiple answers, select the missing word, highlight incorrect words, and write from dictation. You can use your noteboard erasable booklet to take down notes for your relevant questions. Some of these need to take, need some note taking, some may not require it. So please use your noteboard erasable booklet. Only summarize spoken text is time bound that for 10 minutes each question, after which the remaining seven are not timed individually. So how you do the first question is, you will have one to two tasks. You have to listen and write. So here two skills are assessed, listening and writing. And the text length would be about 60 to 90 seconds. Word length would be 50 to 70 words. You have 10 minutes time. You have to listen to the summary. You listen to the talk and write a summary of this within 10 minutes in 50 to 70 words. Ideal length of words would be 40 to 50 words. But even if you write up to 70, you will not get penalized. So the word limit is um, 50 to 70 words. Time for this is time limit is 10 minutes. And how do you manage your time? Spend about one minute planning after listening. Then you put your notes together. You write or type for seven minutes. And the last two minutes, you review and edit your work. Make notes while listening to the text. So as you're listening, if you note down the key points, you will know what you're supposed to write on and what you can omit. Omit the articles and vowels when you're making notes. Like we saw earlier for table, you can just put TBL and you'll remember the word. Use the words like the speaker says and add on to your points. Concentrate on the topic sentence. What is the subject all about? And what are the repeated words? What are they talking about? What is the focus on? You will understand by the repetitive language. Note the supporting points and main ideas from the recording. Summarize the main ideas and main points. Refer briefly to the essential supporting points, the notes you have taken, refer to them, and then you write down your summary. Second question is multiple choice, choose multiple answers. Here the requirements are, you'll have 10 seconds before the recording begins. And from here onwards, you will not have a separate time frame for each question. So in the beginning of the audio, before the audio plays, you will have about 10 seconds, sometimes you'll have seven or eight seconds time, but the audio will start playing by itself automatically. You cannot decide when to start the audio playing, but you can decide when to click on the next button and go to the next question. That is in your control. You are in charge of going to the next question, but your audio playing for the next question will happen automatically. You cannot choose when you, can, when you want to start the audio. But there will be a few seconds time before every audio starts playing and that will help you to just prepare or read the question and um, be ready to be prepared to listen for the content for your answer and you'll be able to extract your answers. For this question, multiple choice, multiple answers, there is negative marking. So the wrong answers will be subtracted from your correct answers. There'll be one or two tasks and you'll have five or six options given. You have to choose maybe two or three or four, but only if you're absolutely sure you choose it. Otherwise, you will lose marks for wrong answers. Whatever correct answer you get, that also will be minused uh, because you would have written some wrong answers. So only what you're absolutely sure of, please mark them. Two to four might be correct answers. And here the skill is only listening. There's no other skill involved. The scoring is here, one mark for every correct response, minus one for every incorrect response. Zero will be the minimum. Even if it goes below minus zero, you will not get minus one or minus two and things like that. It will just be zero as the minimum score. You choose your suitable options. The text recording length will be 40 to 90 seconds long. So after you're listening to that, then you, or as you're listening to it, you can look at the options and keep choosing your answers, which makes sense, which are related or in uh, they're closely related to the question. The strategies for this multiple choice, choose multiple answers are that you have fast speech. So people will not be always speaking slowly and clearly. And answers are mostly paraphrased. 
most of the answers you can find at the ending of the listening. So listen until it finishes. Don't give up. Don't lose focus. And don't start getting distracted because many times the answers come right at the end. And uh, you can also listen for frequency words or they're also known as controlling words, like words like always or often, sometimes, never, many, all, um, frequently, only. But these words change the meaning of the sentence. So they are called controlling words or frequency words. Pay attention to those words to be able to differentiate your answers. Effectively heard word may not be the correct word because it may be a frequency word as we have pointed up in these points above. So eliminate the incorrect options. If that is easier for you, by elimination technique, you can also narrow down your options and choose from the remaining options to, uh, to zero into your correct answers. Thereby you will extract your correct answers, which uh, correlates to the question. Negative marking for every incorrect answer. We have already seen that. Now let's go to the next question type. Just fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks is one of the very easy questions in PT listening, where you have to uh, look at the paragraph and you will have some blanks, three to five blanks in the paragraph. And you will see the paragraph transcript on your screen and you will hear the same text being spoken or dictated. So you have to keep your cursor like this moving on the text as you're listening and where the blank comes you have to listen to that word and type it there if you choose to write it in your noteboard erasable booklet and then type it that is also fine because only when you finish writing your answers you have to click on the next button so you have time to finish your work check for the spelling and then move on if the spelling is wrong it will be zero marks if the Spelling is correct and the word is correct. The answer is correct. You will get one mark for every correct response and zero for every incorrect response. So here the two skills evaluated are listening and writing because spelling comes under a writing skill. You will have the recording length of this paragraph which would last for between 30 and 90 seconds long. And uh, you will have about seven, seven seconds before the audio starts playing. So at this time, you don't need to read the entire paragraph. You just need to see what is the gap or space between the blanks to be prepared as to when you have to write the answer, when you have to just jump to the next blank. Sometimes you can just move along with the cursor, but sometimes if the space between two blanks are very close to each other, you just need to write one answer and jump to the next blank. So you have to be aware of it. So you just study how the blanks are placed. You don't have to read the entire paragraph before you start hearing the recording, which is not required. The audio plays automatically once. It will be played on once and not more than once. So you write the answer or type the answer while you're listening to the audio. And you can write on your noteboard erasable booklet and then type it up. Check for the spelling. Check for capital letters. Suppose the blank word comes after the full stop. That word, next word in the blank would start with the capital letter. Or if it's a proper noun or if you require to start with the capital letter for any of the capitalization rules, please use them because these are all part of writing skills. The proper noun should begin with the cat letter. Be alert for the next word. So keep track what the next word is going, uh, the what word is being uh, showing on your screen and be alert for what is the next word. Type immediately as you're listening. Follow the transcript with your cursor. Use grammar clues like verbs, nouns, adjectives, etc. And check for the context and the grammatical accuracy along with the spelling. So when you finish your answers, just read the sentence. Suppose the sentence, the word in the blank requires a plural form, you should have an S. Even though you might not have heard it, if you think by the grammar rule you require an S, a plural form, please write a plural. And on the, on the other hand, if you have written a singular and um, maybe you heard it as a plural, but it should be a singular, please make it a singular form. So that is, again, a reason why you should be thorough with your grammar rules so that you know that the word you're writing makes complete sense and the grammatical structure of the sentence is complete and correct. Every correct answer carries one mark and every wrong answer carries zero marks. Now let's look at the next question type, which is highlight correct summary. Here you will get one or two items. Two skills are listening and reading. And every correct answer carries one mark. Every wrong answer carries zero marks. 
the word uh, length or the word length would be 40 to 60 words for this summary and the time taken for the audio would be 30 to 90 seconds now here what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to listen to the audio and choose one suitable option of the four paragraphs a b c d one will be very closely related to what content they have spoken about. It would cover most of the points. So you have to identify that one paragraph and click on it. If you want to change it, click on it again, deselect it and select the other, other option. But every correct answer carries only one mark. So don't spend too much time here because your time management is very, very important. Don't spend too much time reading each and every detail. Just skim through, listen. What are the main ideas you heard in the, in the recording? If the main ideas are there, the supporting ideas are there, and all the main points, you can just choose that. The other, other options, uh, other paragraphs would not have all the content, so you can eliminate those. Skim through the text, note the important data, listen for the main ideas and supporting ideas, look for the suggestions, the options, the arguments that they're talking about, the opinions of the speaker. Uh, do not try to read, read all the summaries as you listen. It will be very impractical. Just focus on listening first, understand the theme and the message conveyed by the speaker, and then you can go and use the elimination method and eliminate the wrong answers. Thereby, you'll get your correct answer. Now comes the next question, which is multiple choice to single answer. We saw multiple choice, multiple answers, but here the other question is multiple choice to single answer. This does not carry negative marks like the other one did. Here, the re task required is that you'll have to listen to the recording, and you'll have a question with four options. You have to just choose one of those options, which is the best option, which best relates to the question. Like this, you'll have one or two tasks, and each task will have three to four options. You choose one option, which is correct. Only listening is the skill uh, assister. There's no integration of skills. One mark for the correct answer, no marks for wrong answers, no minus marks either. The recording time is 30 to 60 seconds long, and you have to choose the correct answer. The, um, it takes 10 seconds before the audio starts playing. So you have 10 seconds to just maybe read the question, read all the options, and be prepared to listen to the content. The strategies here are, you will hear people talking very fast most of the time. You have to, again, listen intently, listen carefully. The answers are mostly paraphrased from what they're speaking. You can find most of the answers at the ending of the listening. So again, keep track, keep focus till the end, till the audio finishes, and then you choose your answer. And most of the time, you have to pay attention, very close attention to the frequency words. Like we said, often, sometimes, never, always, only. So these are all the frequency words, are also called the controlling words. Effectively, Heard words may not be the correct word because it may be frequency words. Sometimes they're talking about it as part of the content. That may not be necessarily your part of your answer. You eliminate incorrect options here. For any multiple choice question, elimination technique is always good to follow. So you can eliminate whatever obviously wrong answers you can find, thereby you're narrowing down your option to zero in to, to nail the correct answer. Thereby you find your correct choice. Let's look at the next question, which is select missing word. So you'll get one or two tasks and three or four options will be given. The skill assist is only listening. Every correct answer carries one mark. Every wrong answer, zero marks, no negative marking, no integration of skills. Only listening is the skill assist. You have to choose one suitable option. Here, what happens is you'll hear a recording of about 20 to 70 seconds length. And before the audio starts playing, you'll have seven seconds time just to go through the options. You'll have options, and here no question printed. It's just options given on the screen, A, B, C, D. And you will hear a short recording of 20 to 70 seconds long, and that recording will abruptly stop in the middle of a, an incomplete sentence. You have to use the options from the choices provided to complete that sentence. So it should make sense, first of all, in terms of content, it should make meaning. Second of all, grammatically, it should be correct. There should be correct prepositions before the choice or the option. There should be, suppose it's a, 
uh, an article A and then the, after that you will have a noun form, or if you have a preposition like at, you should have a place or a time, or if you have on, you will have a surface. If you have in, you will have an enclosed space. So here again, I want to emphasize that your grammar knowledge is very, very important. You, it is of core importance to know the know grammar topics at the tip of your fingers, because if you do know that, these answers become so easy for you. And you will know your answers correct because you have the rule behind you. You know, this is the grammar rule and this will be supported by this rule. Otherwise, it will not make sense. So please re revise your grammar topics from the notes provided to you. We have provided the grammar books. Please go through them. Also in our YouTube channel, you have uh, 17 grammar videos where you have PPTs along with the trainer teaching you grammar. So you go through that as many number of times as you can so that you keep listening to your grammar. It's like going back to school and you know having lessons over and over again. But the good thing is you don't have to pay for these grammar lessons. They are all accessible to you at any time, any place. So please make the best uh, use of the resources we are providing to you. Here the answer will be one choice. You have to choose that word which makes sense. You skim through all your options. Before the audio begins, you look at all the four options. Then you listen to the audio carefully, focus on the overall ideas of what they're talking about, identify the specific words and phrases, identify the topic, the theme, the main ideas, Listen carefully to the last few words spoken. And the last few words, you will see your, your progression bar moving. So when the progression bar is coming to the end, you will know now is going to beep suddenly. So when that beep comes, you should hear the last few words that are, have been spoken so that you can attach that option to the last few words which have been spoken. And that attaching should be perfect in terms of tenses, prepositions, and and um, all meaning wise also content, it has to make sense. If they're talking about past tense throughout the talk, your option would be a past tense word. If they're talking present continuous, your answer would be present continuous, like is um, going, is discussing, is an ING form, or it could be past continuous, it could be future continuous, it could be the preposition, like I said, on, in, at, and you have those appropriate words which match along with those particular prepositions. Now let's move on to the next question type. It is the second last question. That is the seventh question. It is highlight incorrect words. Now this question has negative marking again. So in listening, there are two questions which have negative marking. That is multiple choice, multiple answers and highlight incorrect words. In the reading module, you have one question which has negative marking. That is multiple choice, multiple answers. So in reading, there's one question and listening two questions. So totally in the PT test, there are three questions which have negative marking. Now in highlight incorrect words, you will have a transcription on your screen and you'll hear the person reading the same thing as what is on the screen. However, there will be some words which are different, which do not match with what you see on the screen. You have to just click on that. That is the incorrect word. What word shows on your screen would be incorrect, but what they are saying in that place, in place of that word, would be the correct usage. So what you're highlighting essentially is the incorrect word. What does not match? What they're saying is something and what you see on screen is different. Like this, you will get two tasks or maybe sometimes three, you may get two to three items. And in each paragraph, you will have three to four uh, answers, sometimes even five to six maybe. So here the two skills are listening and reading. It has partial credit, one mark for every correct answer, minus one for every incorrect answer. You have to choose the options here and um, the recording length would be maybe 70 seconds long. You'll have about seven seconds before the audio starts. But remember, there's no need to read the entire paragraph before the audio starts playing. You just have to listen. As you're listening along, you will know which are the answers you should mark. You will hear a recording and you have to read a transcript of the recording, which differs from what the speaker says. You click on the word, which is different on the transcript from what you hear. Otherwise, you can place your cursor on the word which is being dictated and keep moving along and click on the incorrect word. If you score two, um, uh, if you score two points for uh, two points for correct options and there are two which are incorrect, it will be two minus two, zero. So the wrong answers, 
will be minus subtracted from your correct answers. So listen and be prepared to act quickly. Be quick in your listening. Keep listening to the end of the word. Sometimes the beginning of the word will sound same, but the end will be different. Like content and constant. It may be written content on the screen, but they may say constant. But if you just see con in the beginning and think, okay, that is okay. I'm just passing it off. And you go to the next word. So you won't mark that word because you thought that is the same as what they're saying. But in fact, the, uh, the last part of the word was not content. It was not tent, it was stent. So constant, you had to mark that option. So you have to listen to the end of every word to make sure you don't skip off or you don't miss out an answer. If you're not certain, you just leave that word and keep moving on because if you leave out the word unanswered, it is no, there's no negative marks. You will just not be scored for it. But if you choose a word which is wrong, which was uh, not supposed to be, to be marked and you mark it, then that gets deducted from your total correct answers. Now we come to the last question of the listening test and to the PT test, that is list, right from dictation. You will hear a sentence being dictated and you have to write that sentence in the same word order as how you heard it. This is similar to the question which you had in speaking where you had to repeat sentence, but here instead of repeating, you're writing it down. You're not saying it verbally, you're writing it down, you're typing the sentence. The word order should be same as what you heard. You can't change the order, even if the meaning is correct, you're not supposed to change the order of the word. And you have to start with the capital letter, end with the full stop, put a comma in between if you think it's absolutely necessary. And if you think the capitalization rule applies, you have to use that rule. There'll be three to four items like this, and you have to listen carefully. And if you don't get some words in between, you can put a dash, dash, blank, and leave it. If you are the first part and forget the last part, write the first part and leave out the rest. Because you get one mark for every correct, correctly spelled word. So one mark for every correctly spelled word is worth it. So don't think, okay, I didn't hear, I don't understand the sentence, and leave out the whole thing. Even if you hear two words, write the two words, you'll get two marks. If you hear five, five words out of 10, write the five words. Put some blanks in between so that, you know, that, that means that something is missing there. It's not this entire sentence. So you write whatever you have heard. You will again get 70, uh, about seven seconds before you hear the recording. You can't do much in terms of preparation. You have to just gear yourself up. Keep your pencil if you want to. Note down on your notebook, erasable booklet. You can quickly scribble through and then you can type it. But make sure you manage your time well so that you keep enough time for these questions at the end, like highlight incorrect words and write from dictation. They're very scoring questions. They're the first two and the last two are the most, the most important questions in PTE. So you have to keep time for these last two questions and uh, keep a track of your time throughout from the second question to the eighth question and listening. It's all about how you manage your time. Every particular question type does not have a, an individual time frame, So you have to be quick for every question. Each Correctly spelled word carries one mark. Capitalization rules apply. Punctuation rules apply. Start with the capital and end with the full stop. You will be tested on academic vocabulary here. So your spelling is very important because they're dictating the words and the sentences. So you should know the correct spelling. Okay. Follow an oral sequencing of information and the correct spelling. Listen to a sentence and type the sentence in the box as you hear it. You will hear the recording only once. Listen carefully and write the sentences down on the erasable notebook booklet and then transfer it and type it onto your screen. And you can check for the spelling, check for full stops, check for capitalization, check for comma usages. Once you're done, you edit it and then you click on the next button, it gets saved. Here we are at the end of the PT briefing session. If you have any questions related to Pearson test of English exam, types of questions, preparation, we are here to help you. I'm happy that you stayed along and uh, watched this video. I hope it was of help to you. And we are here to answer any of your questions. You'll reach out to us. We will be meeting you in the next session in the class. Thank you for listening. All the best in your preparation for your exam. Thank you. Oh, 45.